Hey folks, Mike James here. In today's video lesson, we're going to be learning about knowing your audience. Now, as an author, it is absolutely vital to know who your audience are, but I know what you're thinking. How should I know? I don't have enough readers to even know who my audience should be. Who are my readers in the first place? Well, look, halt, don't panic. We're going to tell you everything you need to know in this action-packed video. As I always say before we get going, smash that subscribe button to make sure that you get to stay up to date with our free author marketing tip videos. They will come to you automatically each time we upload a new one. And check out the description box below this video as well for a ton of free resources to allow you to hit the ground running, sell more books, and build that life you've always dreamed of. My presentation is ready, so let's head over to the MacBook and talk about knowing your audience. So as mentioned, here's our topic for today, new author tips, know your audience. Why is this important? Well, as we like to say in marketing, audience is everything. When you're crafting any sort of message, whether it's traditional advertisement in the newspaper, a digital ad that will run on Google, or a social media post, what you want to know is how your message is likely to affect your audience and whether or not you'll achieve the outcome that you desire. To give you an example, let's say a laundry detergent brand puts out a tweet inviting mums to spill about the worst stain or laundry disaster they've ever seen and hashtag it with laundry emergency. From this, we know that the brand would like to reach women and in particular, women that have had children. They want these women to get mentally and emotionally invested by recalling memories and perhaps elicit humor and goodwill because of course, those memories are gonna feel funny in hindsight. The brand are clearly interested in reaching what they feel is their target audience for this messaging. Their aim is to receive engagements from mothers and mothers who do the laundry. So this tweet is a great example of selecting content based on the audience rather than just throwing whatever you can at the wall and hoping that some of it sticks. But let's drill down here, guys. Why is this important for book marketing? It's important for book marketing much in the same way as it is for any other kind of marketing. Remember, the core principles and tenets of marketing don't change if the product changes. When you're trying to attract an audience, you are much more likely to be successful when you craft those messages to reach that audience. Much like the laundry detergent brand, you have to know who you're trying to reach and then you can speak directly to that group. Now don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean you speak only to your selected core audience, but that you keep them in mind under the wider umbrella of your marketing. You may discover that your average reader, say, is a woman in her mid-30s who works in management and loves date nights with her partner, cat videos on YouTube, and gardening at the weekends. You're not going to tweet endless cat videos because of this, right? That's not your brand, but you will, every time you approach your marketing, wonder, would she like this? Will she respond to this? Is this something that will appeal to her? Sorry guys, let me get my next slide up. There we go. The her in question your reader persona. Now let's dive into the idea of a reader persona. This is something you can do to really pinpoint your core audience in a very specific way. When you ask yourself if she would like a tweet, what you're really asking is whether your audience would like it. However, by gathering all of your research and putting together one individual, it's much, much easier to imagine whether a tweet will succeed. It's almost intimidating wondering if a Facebook post will be well received by a crowd of people, right? But it's much, much simpler to wonder if one person will like it and engage with it. So how do you find this reader persona? Um, a bit of an unsexy answer, unfortunately. You do need to do research. This will take time, but believe me, it's well worth it. Here's some quick tips. Study your own readers if you have a published book and pinpoint recurring characteristics. Look at things like age, gender, interests, other genres they like, etc. Look up authors in your genre and study their readers closely. Set up a survey through SurveyMonkey. This is a, a free service for you guys who've never used it before. Absolutely great. Now, post anywhere that you gather readers from your genre and offer an incentive for completion, say a free ebook. People love being asked about themselves and you'll be amazed at how many will be absolutely fine with filling out the survey. If you have the budget, consider a focus group. You can put together a group of people that read in your genre, a prolific reviewers or even big names in the reviewing community, like your librarians on Goodreads or bloggers. You can then ask this group a series of questions to ascertain demographic information and specific information like interests, income level, 
education level, etc. Focus groups, of course, are very intense, and it is likely that you'll need to pay the people that participate, but remember, the information you gather is an absolute goldmine. And finally, if you're an established author with social media profiles and an active website, do a deep dive into your Google Analytics and social media analytics to gather statistics about your current audiences. What do you need to know? Well, in putting together your reader persona, there's a lot you need to know about your audience. Review your research and look at correlations. Are, for example, 89% of your audience female? Well, your reader persona will be a woman. Ask yourself some questions. We have a great list here. I'm not going to go through them all, but you know, look at what their gender is, what level of education they have, what websites they visit. Do they watch TV shows, movies? If so, which ones are most likely to interest them? Uh, what other genre, book genres do they like? Where do they go for their social interactions? Are they somebody who reviews books or do they just read them? If they do review them, the kind of person that likes uh, sharing their enthusiasm with others, etc. Super, super important stuff. So you might want to take some notes there from that slide. Next, we need to look at putting it all together. So you've done your research, you've asked the questions and you've arrived here. It's time to put everything together. First things first, take all of your research, all those snippets of information, all of the correlations you've noted and the similarities and write a thorough examination of this person. It's absolutely fine to get specific. You want your reader persona, of course, to be as alive as possible. So let's put together a reader persona together so you can see how it's one part imagination and three parts solid research. So to start, we have Rose. Hello, Rose. Rose is a single mother working as an executive at a law firm in Canada. Now, she's in her mid-40s, she's college-educated, and a huge fan of mysteries, especially any set in the United Kingdom. She doesn't watch a lot of TV, but she does subscribe to Netflix, and she loves documentaries. All in all, though, she'd rather sit by her wood stove with a good book, which, of course, is an ideal fan for an author to have. Rose eats a vegetarian diet, has two cats and one dog. In her spare time, she volunteers at a local animal rescue charity and spends her time cleaning out cages, snuggling the animals and walking the dogs. Animal rights are a big issue for Rose, and she's not likely at all to read books that include cruelty towards animals. Let's dive deeper here. Rose, she's an online shopper. She loves Kindle daily deals, though she isn't a member of Kindle Unlimited. Her favorite social media platform is Instagram, and she uses Twitter for news and Facebook to keep updated on family. She's an avid Goodreads user and keeps up with her favorite mystery writers right there. A loyal reader, Rose sticks around with authors that she loves for life. Alternate personas. So Rose is your baseline, but your books may have crossover potential into other areas. Perhaps you write mysteries with a young adult slant, for example. With that in mind, go over your research again and come up with two other personas that come from the data. Example, let's say Xander, a young gay man living in Texas, and Sabrina, a teenage girl that loves romance novels. Keep these alternate personas in mind, especially when dealing with any of your work that has crossover potential. Let's look at how to use your reader persona. It's simple and effective. Before posting a marketing message, whether it's a tweet, a giveaway, a blog post, a website update, refer back to your reader persona and ask yourself a few questions. Again, you might want to write these down. So let's just pull some off here. What would Rose, would Rose appreciate the post? Would it be relevant to her? Yeah, is it the kind of content that she's found appealing in the past? Does it fit with you as the author branding and message? Uh, does your research tie that this message will be well received by the audience? Super important stuff. Don't want to go through them um, question by question or point by point, but definitely make sure you pause this and you write those down. Let's look inward. Remember, there is always you. Chances are that you're a fan of the genre that you're writing in. You probably read books in that genre and follow authors. So it follows that you are the kind of person that would buy your books. Don't forget to do a gut check before posting something. Ask yourself what you think of the post as a reader or a consumer. Would you like the post or would you ignore it? Do you think you'd be annoyed at the volume of sales messages you've put out? Is the post as an advertisement relative to you as a fan of that genre? These are all ways you can keep your messaging consistent and strong, encourage better engagement, and grow that wider base 
of readers. Well, in our next video for authors, we're planning to do a deep dive into keyword research, which is an offshoot of knowing your audience and a great skill for new and established authors to learn. So make sure that you watch this space. Well, everybody, that's about all we have time for right now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Remember to smash that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our informative videos for authors. This author marketing community channel is for authors and is all about getting you the absolute best information so you can market your book with confidence and ease. So till next time, I'm Mike James. I hope you have a wonderful day.